First trade is a 12 team super flex start 11 PPR 0.5 tight end premium Kyron Williams for Jordan Addison. Which side do you want to have in this case? You know, if we have to, if the value is fair, at least if it's not fair, what are we doing to fix the trade? What do we need to add either side to make this deal fair and work in the wild? I want the Kyron Williams side. This is a guy who was running back seven last year. Well, here's the thing. I've been saying sell Kyron Williams Whoa. all off season, but I want better value than Jordan Addison. It's that easy. Um, do I like Jordan Addison more? I like the player as a prospect better. Yes, I do. Um, but just because I like a player better doesn't mean I'm going to devalue a current player who – has the path and the potential to be a top 10 running back again this year. I'm not going to give away a player that's productive just because I don't like them. Um, so this is the Kyron Williams side for me personally. Um, I think you're giving away a guy who, again, could be a top 10 running back. It's possible. You know, there's guys in the top 10 here that could fall out, like uh, Rashad White could not be running back four again. Raheem Mostert was running back five. Joe Mixon running back six. These guys could all drop down, and I'm anticipating that you know guys like Saquon Barkley comes back up. Maybe he's not a top 10, but the fact of the matter is you're definitely selling too low. Uh, straight up Kyron Williams for Jordan Addison. What what would you need on top of Addison to take this deal, Mike? You know, I'm going to start at like a second round pick. The fact of the matter is, do I think Kyron Williams has a long shelf life? No. But right now, this is a guy who could potentially, he was a running back one many weeks for your fantasy team. So I'm not going to sell low. Uh, that's my starting offer. And we can negotiate from there, obviously. I think we can move along to the next one. 12 team super flex start nine PPR format uh, with no tight end premium. Not that it super matters in this one. We went with the reverse mortgage buy here on uh, Jackson Smith and Jigba for a 24 third, a 25 second and 26 first. What side do you want here? Is this an overpay? Is it an underpay? Is it a good value? Is it fair? And not to mention that first is two or three drafts away. No, thank you. Give me the JSN side personally. Um, this is just way too much to pay, but look, look the, the cheap, it goes cheapest to most expensive as far as commodity wise, the third, now the second next year, the first in two years, um, credit to whoever offered that trade up for trying to get a player they like. Um, but if I'm selling a player that I like, which is JSN and there's a first round pick involved, it needs to be a lot sooner than 2026. Yeah. I, I think for me on this one, I loved buying JSN, by the way, I'm a, I've, still in on the JSN bandwagon. I think I would just throw out the third round pick move and then move everything up a year. If you want to buy in that way, I think a first and a second is relatively fair as if with the first I being agree. a year out, you know, I think it's around a late first anyway, you know, you get that second round pick and now the first later still don't love the cost to buy, but you know, that's probably about where he's going. I, you know, granted we've seen a lot of very cheap trades, for Jackson Smith and Jacob would come through the discord people getting for like a pair of second round picks and things of that sort. So, Hey, if you're in on JSN still like we are, you know, consider diving in on that. My probably least favorite trade of the entire show. Um, this gets an F from me, 12 team, one quarterback, start eight, one PPR, no tight end premium, uh, sending Zach Moss for a 25 first. This was not a discord trade. So all you discordians out there watching along are safe for now. Um, Moving Zach Moss for 25 first, I just can't get behind it. Um, a guy who has shown ultimately very little over the course of his career while he's been fine as a, you know, backup handcuff, things of that sort. There's no guarantee that he's going to commandeer the entire backfield. There's no guarantee he's going to get a long-term deal out of this. There's no guarantee in any of this. There's no guarantee that Zach Moss is really even that good. For a 25 first and a 12 team, even if that pick is 112, this is still not a square deal. Um, you know, this needs to be a 25 second at most. And ideally you're getting like Zach Moss and a 26 third back, but Mike, where are you at on this one? Yeah. I mean, if I have Zach Moss and somebody offers me a 25 first, I'll probably take it though. Wouldn't you? Oh yeah. I would, I would absolutely take it. Of course I would Mike, yeah. but this is what you're saying right now. And you know, like Nate has alluded to many times on this podcast, you know, Zach Moss was brought in to compliment, um, Chase mm -hmm. Brown, but I feel like with him being a free agent signing. Uh, people think he's going to be the lead back. I mean, if you're getting the 25 first, good on you. If you're spending the 25 first, you said this is not a Discord trade? Correct. 
patreon.com forward slash Thomas Rewind, <laughs> week free, get in the Discord, come chat with us. With that said, we will cruise right along here. Uh, we did the Zach Moss one. We have another 10-team, one quarterback, um, start eight, PPR, no tight end premium. Not that you know one quarterback really plays a role too much here, but running back's a little more value in a one quarterback league. So T Higgins for Devon A. Chan, kind of an interesting one, I think. Depends kind of maybe what side of the road you are if you're trying to compete, whatever the case is. Mike, I'll kick this one to you first. This is really tough for me. You're you're talking a guy in T. Higgins who, you know, he's on that that deal, the one year deal, whatever they call it. The why can I not think of what it's called? Franchise tag. Franchise tag. That's what I meant. And then you have uh, Devon A. Chan. A little undersized, but in a really good spot in Miami. They did re-sign Raheem Mostert. He's a guy who's also been banged up. I think it's kind of fair, to be honest with you. Um, right now, I'm going to lean the uh, A-chan side. Um, I am an A-chan believer, a stan, if you will. And on a points-per-game basis, which I am trying desperately to find, but I'm getting the little spinny thing, so it's not letting me do it. He was pretty good last year. Oh, there it is. 17.3 fantasy points per game last year. Yeah, so we're talking almost 20 points a game. In PPR formats, so, yeah. you 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 have that conversation with Achan though of that whole when he's healthy because that was you know T Higgins another guy was pretty banged up last year as well. Didn't miss Fair him. enough, so, I'll agree yeah. with that. I, it's one of those things where, unless it's a guy like Christian Watson who's just always hurt, I try to not do go too hard on guys for injuries anymore because I get it happens. So you know it's just one of those things, but um, I just really think there's some good upside. I think I see both sides here. I really do. But I think when you're looking at a start eight lineup, you need as many points as you can pack into that thing as possible. And while a chain comes with that inherent risk of injury, whatever the case is being banged up, whatever it is, I think a chain gives you the best possibility for putting points into your roster. And I think for that, for me is what tips the scale that little bit. So I'll take Devon a chain here. Barely. I'm also a known T Higgins hater. So that might be on me. With that said, let's talk about this next trade here. This is a 12-team super flex start 10 PPR 0.75 tight end premium. David Montgomery for Ben Sennett. What do you think about this one, Mike? Mm, this one's tough um, because I like David Montgomery, but this is a running back that's aging and in a timeshare. That being said, it should be David Montgomery for Ben Sennett plus. The late third on top of Ben Sennett there. You know what I mean? It's just... I feel like if you trade David Montgomery straight up for Ben Sennett, it's a bit of an overpay at this point in time. Yeah, I, I think in this format, A, David Montgomery is somebody I kind of want to get moving off of sooner rather than later, unless I have Jameer Gibbs and he's just kind of a natural handcuff that maybe I can flex on occasion. But I think over time, David Montgomery is going to get, you know, not filtered entirely out of this offense, but I think it'll get used less and less. And a lot of the points that we're going to Montgomery will slowly shift to Gibbs. You know, and that that becomes less and less valuable over time. And once people catch up to that, that's going to sink his value pretty quick. So if I can if I can move Dave Montgomery for a Benson at plus, like I think you can in a lot of scenarios, I'd be surprised if you, you know, with where we see Benson at going in a lot of drafts and, the you know, sliding all the way to the third round in some leagues for some god awful reason. I know this is a tight end premium, so obviously he's a little bit more valued than non tight end premium rookie drafts. This is 12 team super flex start 10.5 PPR, no tight end premium. Moving George Pickens for Saquon Barkley. I, if you could sell George Pickens for Saquon Barkley, I'll do this every day of the week, twice on Sunday type of thing. This, if I had Barkley, this would need a lot more on the Pickens side. You know, I'm, I'm thinking like a second round pick and a higher projected second round pick. Saquon Barkley to me is about a mid first worth of value. I'm not getting that out of George Pickens. I'm getting like a late, late first worth, early second. So I, I think that's what I need on top of this trade, Mike. What do you think? I agree. Uh, give me the Saquon Barkley side, and you're 100% correct in your assessment of George Pickens' values. So you're taking a devalued wide receiver asset, we could say, because at one point in time, sure. he's, you know, a lot of people were thinking very highly of him, but we don't know what Russell Wilson's going to look like. Um, hopefully he's the Seattle Russell Wilson, not the Denver one. Although, you know, he didn't play terrible down the stretch. I just think they were done with him. I don't know what it was. Give me the player on what looks to be the better offense right now. And I yeah. do think for once we might see a bell cow in Philadelphia because you don't pay Saquon Barkley $30 some million to put him in a timeshare with Kenneth Gainwell. So rolling on into the next one here, pulling trades again from our Discord, directly from our Discord. Um, I think this was actually sent in as a, 
hey, I saw this in one of my leagues. That's another benefit. It's not just all the Discordian trades. It's a bunch of real-life trades coming in there and just getting dropped and discussed at length in there as well. So this is 12-team Superflex start 10 PPR 0.5 tight end premium. Would you rather have Justin Herbert or Dak Prescott plus a 25 second and a 25 third on top? I'm pretty torn here, Mike. If I'm being totally honest, like I get, you know, the yeah. youth here that's with Justin Herbert, but Dak Prescott is not a quarterback to be trifled with or devalued. You mm. know, was a top quarterback down the stretch last year. You get some bonus assets on top. Dak Prescott isn't that old. I believe he's 30 going on 31. I'm I I see both sides here. I really do. You know, if this is a, a team trying to get a little younger at quarterback, I think Herbert is still set to be pretty darn good um down the stretch this year. I don't think he's gonna be top five or anything like that, but I think he can still be a top 12 quarterback. And with his youth, I think he can still be in that same value round. But Dak's nothing to scoff at here, and you get some picks on top. I'm leaning the Dak side here. It just, yeah. you know, like you said, he's still just right, hovering right around 30 there. Again, not a death sentence for quarterbacks anymore. And I like Justin Herbert, but well, who's he throwing it to? Quentin Johnston is there. Lad they draft, McConkey. They drafted Lad McConkey, who I like Lad McConkey, but he has had some back issues. And he's a, he is a rookie. We've seen rookies come out and not do what we wanted them to. Yeah. Josh I'm Palmer. Just, Jordan Palmer, who I like. Josh, Josh Palmer, Palmer, sorry. Dak does have CeeDee Lambs. Good connection there. Brandon Cooks, mm -hmm. Jalen Tolbert, um, and Jake Ferguson. So, Oh, and Ezekiel Elliott is back, too. So, yeah, um, yeah. Off there. I'm, I'm going to lean Dak here. But I like fantasy points, and I do think that there is a reality where Dak has a better chance of getting fantasy, more fantasy points this year than Justin Herbert. Like both players, but um, I want the proven points. Chiming in here on the deal, the second and third are very early. For the Herbert Dak trade, if that changes it, give me the Dak side then. Absolutely. I, I mean, good lord. I mean, that really tips the scale for me. So that's, I mean, if they're almost practically a first round pick and a second round pick, it's a different story. So 100%, I will take the picks, pocket the picks, and run. And I'll run along to this next trade. Here we have 12 team super flex start nine PPR 0.5 tight end premium moving Dalton Kincaid, or I guess you could say moving this other side. Either way, Dalton Kincaid was exchanged, uh, Dallas Goddard, Eric All, and a 25 second round pick. I don't know about you, Mike, but I am throwing all of this at the wall to go get Dalton Kincaid. That's his, uh, that's yeah. His I mean, look, the fact of the matter is, I like Dallas Goddard. He's not played a full season as a starter. I obviously like him as an Eagles fan. Um, Eric All, we don't know. We don't know. Mike Gusecki is the starting tight end there right now. And for all we know, he could come out of have a good year. Maybe they extend him. OK, and the 25 second is a question mark. So give me Dalton Kincaid, who I think is going to be most likely the receiver one for the Buffalo Bills yeah. this year. Um, and I want that. Give me the Kincaid side. 12 team, one quarterback, start nine PPR, no tight end premium. Rashi Rice for a random 25 second and third. Mike, what side do you want here? I'll take Rashi Rice. I don't yeah. hate this. You know what I mean? I know you hate when I say it, but I got two years to get those picks back, Bob. Um, yeah. But I know in a lot of cases, this in this circumstance, maybe that 24 draft has already passed. But I don't hate it at all. I think it's fair value for Rasheed Rice. And I know Zach's not the biggest fan of him. I like Rasheed Rice. I think he's in a good spot. He's got a good connection with a top 10 quarterback. Give me Rasheed Rice. I'll take the Rashi Rice side here. I'm, you know, I've been very adamant. If you have Rashi Rice, hold him. You know, I don't think you're getting any great values for him selling at this point. You know, there. I feel like there's been a lot of overblow if you let's let's say it like this because zach doesn't believe in rashi rice the player if you don't believe in rashi rice the player sell out for whatever you can get you know sell out for something you can live with don't sell super low i think this is okay for what his value is at right now it's definitely taking some hits but if you believe in rashi rice don't just sell out because you're scared of something that hasn't even happened yet something that hasn't you know transpired into be anything more than a, a few game suspension, which we're looking at a suspension is what it is. How long does it end up being? It's not the end of the world, in my opinion. But if you got him, I'm I'm holding him. If if you believe in the player and think he's good enough as is and can even get better, you know, was a uh, close to finishing as a top. I think he was a top 30 wideout last year on the season as a rookie set the oh, no, receptions right. record, set the receptions record, excuse me, for 
Um, the playoffs for a rookie, nothing to scoff at. You know, Rashi Rice was pretty darn good last year. Yes, they bring in some weapons. I like Xavier Worthy a good bit. Marquise Brown has been a walking question mark everywhere he's been, but yeah, either either way, I'll uh, I'll take that one, no doubt. So she moving, raised wide receiver twenty seven. So you were you were right on about that thirteen point three fantasy points per game. That's nothing to scoff at by any stretch of the imagination. It's going to keep going up, everybody. Looking at this next one here, we got a fourteen team super flex start eight point five PPR point five tight end premium. Derrick Henry for a twenty five second and an additional twenty five seconds. So that would be for those of you keeping score at home, two. 25 seconds for Derrick Henry. In my opinion, that's almost like double his value. So I don't know if I could do that without getting any pick back. I also don't like buying in on a player that is set to decline, like is a guaranteed about to decline. Yeah. Like Derrick Henry is. So that would be a little concerning for me moving in on that cost. Um, I'd want something back. Give me a third back in 2025. I could probably stomach that. You have to assume one of these that you're sending is probably yours. If you're buying Derrick Henry, at least I hope you're competitive. So one of them you could expect to be late. If you're getting a third round pick back, you know, at least it's not that detrimental. There's still a pick upgrade in there for them, an extra pick upgrade. They get a free pick for Derrick Henry as well. That's where I'd be at personally. I think Derrick Henry's going to be fine. I'm not saying he's, the wheels are going to fall off, but I just don't love this value. Mike, your thoughts? No, I, I agree with you. And I know a lot of people do not like keep trade cut, but I'm going to give you a tip on how I can kind of value players. When you go in to keep trade cut and you look at their dynasty rankings, you could put picks in. So up up at the top of the screen, you could just pick like running backs and picks. So see where Derrick Henry falls and where people are valuing these picks. And why I like keep trade cut, people are like, oh, it's crowdsourced. How do you think DLF gets their ADP? How do you think the dynasty rewind gets their ADP? We crowdsource. And this is important because these are the people you are playing against. So see where he lines up. Bob, I'm in 100% in agreement with you. I feel like Derrick Henry for two seconds is a trade that you make in week 12 of the season, but not right now. You know, when you're trying, he's sure. having a good season, he's coming along, you got that playoff push coming. Give me Derrick Henry, I'll give you two seconds. But if I'm paying those two seconds, I agree with you. I want a little something back if they're balking at picks because for whatever reason, picks are like prime currency in dynasty fantasy football and i get it look at the bottom of the roster are there any upside players that you can scoop up any guys that you think could break out that they don't have room for on their roster they don't have room for on their taxi so it doesn't always have to be about picks be about players too so treat in in certain circumstances treat those upside players like their draft picks and we got another trade coming up here 12 team superflex start start 10 this is a uh, picks trade here. Uh, 12 team super flex start 10.5 PPR, no tight end premium. The 101 plus the 212 was moved for the 102, the 111, and Mike $10 fab. What side of this deal do you prefer? I know what side I prefer in the at the end of the day. So it's you're trading essentially, you're trading Caleb Williams for Marvin Harrison Jr. If yeah. you know, it's super flex league, if you don't need a quarterback and you're okay, then give me the 102 and the 111 side. Um, I think that is the winner just because that 101 to 211, that, eh, it's a little rough. You know what I mean? So I'm leaning that side. So there's, there is some additional context. This trade was made by the team that had the 102, has no quarterback help. They have Dak Prescott, and then they have backups, basically. So they moved the 102, the 111, plus that $10 in fab for the 101 to get up and guarantee Caleb Williams plus the 211. And honestly, I don't like that deal. I would much rather have stayed put at 102, keep my 111, and $10 fab, whatever. And I would have draft. I would have rather just draft Bo Nix at the 111 because he's sliding into the second rounds of drafts. Knowing your league as well, I would rather do that because the the variance in player you get from 111 to 211, it's a world of difference. But the difference in 101 to 102, while you fill a positional need, doesn't do that much for me value-wise. At the end of the day, what those two players are worth, it's not worth making that deal. If you were at 103 and needed to move into one of those picks for that value, I'd be much more on board with it. But you're moving back a full round of players, totally different world of players that you're dealing with. And a start 10, that matters. If it were a start eight, it mattered a, it mattered a heck of a lot less anyway, but it still matters being a start 10. So I'd much rather have... You know, kept the 102, 111 side draft Bo Nix at the end of the first round. I know maybe maybe the uh, manager wasn't a fan of Bo Nix, so that really wasn't there. But that's just an option. Of course. The consideration as well of you know uh, trading that 111 for 
for the 50th time this podcast or this recording, send it for Jared Goff and maybe get a plus on top. Maybe you just get Jared Goff with it either which way. But yeah, I just think there was other ways to go about this than making that trade up. And it, as far as my understanding goes, this was moved 102 plus 111 plus 10 before any pick was made. So that player might have not even drafted Caleb Williams. That's the one on one. And maybe you can look at the roster and be like, this guy is going to draft in there. He has no quarterback help, whatever the case is. Or maybe he wants to do this to play keep away from you. Either way, I don't love the overall model here. I was sitting in a similar situation at 102. I was pretty okay at quarterback. I didn't need another quarterback, but I said, hey, I'm good with whatever one. The person at 101 tried to trade up, trade swap with me to because i needed a quarterback they thought i wanted to go up for a quarterback but i'm like man i'll say and just get whatever falls and i got what i wanted anyway that could have happened here too who knows just things to be thought about i think this could have been gone about differently i don't hate it but at the end of the day like i said i just think it could have been gone about a little differently so we're talking some more quarterbacks here we got a 12 team superflex start 9.5 ppr with no tight end premium jj mccarthy for will levis plus a 25 first mike what do you want to do here nothing <laughs> i mean look jj mccarthy has yet to play an nfl game right. there there is a reality where they redshirt him sam darnold's there could happen i don't think it will far, but, but yeah. it could you never know um will sure. levis we know he's the starting quarterback in tennessee we don't know what that's going to look like but we know he's the starter um this to me just feels like a little bit of an overpay though for JJ McCarthy yeah. right now. If it was Will Levis and a projected like mid to late second, I'd feel a little bit better about it. And I'm a JJ McCarthy fan, but just a little bit of an overpay for me right now. And I don't think you could trade Levis straight up for JJ McCarthy either. 100%. So I have good news for you. This was made by a Discordian of ours. So we are also bonus information. Our two quarterbacks, we have Mahomes and Kyler Murray. So we're we're good at quarterback one and two. J.J. McCarthy was our third quarterback. Somebody wanted to make a swap. So we got to move J.J. McCarthy for Will Levis plus that 25 first. I think realistically it probably should have been a second like you mentioned. Yeah. I think that would have been a little bit more fair value. But this is a really nice add-on okay. piece you get to get. You get Will Levis is kind of like an upside piece either way. Just maybe not as much as uh, J.J. McCarthy is. But still a bit of an upside add here at that value and cost. So This is really good too because if you're getting that 25 first, the 25 running back class – um, is going to be much more stout than this running back class that we got. I think we see some first round running backs next year. Um, so you might have a chance to get one of the premier RBs in next year's class. Moving on into another one here. We got a 12 team super flex start 10 PPR 0.510 premium moving Najee Harris for one of your favorite tight ends, Mike, Jake Ferguson, which one do you want? Which side do you want here? I was looking at this one before and I don't know, Jake Ferguson, think he was tight in nine last year without checking Sounds right. talking right now um yeah this is the move to make if you want to get a top 10 tight end Najee harris his value is down a little bit right now so if you are good at running back which are you ever really good at running back i don't know um then this is the move that you make for a guy like jake ferguson i don't hate it i think i lean very slightly the jake ferguson side hoping for a resurgence from Najee harris this year under arthur smith I, i'm i've never been a huge uh, Jake Ferguson guy, you was plenty enough efficient last year, though. Um, but I think Najee Harris being a little, uh, excuse me, a little devalued right now, you know, discounting Arthur Smith's offense, which has always been good for running backs, a good running system. I think he's going to be good for Najee. I think that offense is going to pound the rock again. Najee is set to be a free agent on his own volition, apparently. Did not get his uh, fifth year option picked up because he didn't want it picked up. He wanted to test the market Interesting. wisely, wisely when it was a weaker free agency class, albeit a tougher rookie running back class but it's a weak free agency class so we'll see what happens with that but i think i lean slightly towards Najee. i feel like i can find another tight end to give me enough of what ferguson is to replace that versus what i think Najee is actually going to give you which i think is rb2 numbers i think i can find fringe tight end number tight end one number somewhere else you know maybe not even fringe but i think i can probably buy Evan Ingram for less than I can buy Jake Ferguson or at least similar valued. And I think Evan Ingram is going to do better target wise, efficiency wise and all that than Jake Ferguson. Moving on to another one here. We got five more to rattle through lightning fire here. Uh, we got a 10 team super flex start 9.5 PPR. No tight end premium. Samir White for a 25 first this is another 
D minus one for me. Not as bad as the Zach Moss for a 25 first, but it's definitely still an overpay in my book. You know, I get running backs are valuable, but, you know, and this is guaranteed a top 10 pick, you know, whereas the other one could be a 112. This is a top 10 pick. You're getting a top 10 yeah. rookie next year for Zamir White. That is not fair value. This should be a second. Maybe you tack on a third. Zamir White does have admittedly some more quote unquote upside for long term, long term you know, production, maybe he gets locked into a larger role, a role secures another contract, albeit not a crazy one because running backs don't get paid in the year he's up. He's very crowded free agency class as well. So I hate this value. I think it should be a second, maybe a third on top. Maybe you send Zamir in a second or a Zamir in a third to get a second kind of a thing, but, or vice versa. You get what I'm saying. I struggle with this one though, Mike, what are your thoughts? No, I don't like it. I think it's an overpay for Zamir White. I like Zamir White. I've been saying buy Zamir White, but this wasn't what I meant when I said buy Zamir White. <laughs> it's just got to be a little cheaper. There should not be a number one in front of that draft pick for Zamir White. And Hey, you know, look, we've seen it before. It was a mid round pick. He gets a chance, tweak something. Alexander Madison comes out, has a good game or two. All of a sudden they're rolling with the hot hand and then it's a split. Yeah backfield we've seen it before we've seen stuff like this happen all the time with these mid-round picks it's just an overpay for me and i like the guy what if you sent what you, you know if you're buying it on zamir white you're probably expecting your first to be late what if you sent a 25 first for zamir white and a 25 second are you more in I on that value much, i feel much better about that because if zamir white doesn't pan out all right so i lost out on a late hopefully hopefully first but i'm getting this second round back and we don't know where that's gonna land right okay i, I yeah i'm getting something back i feel much better about that i'd probably look to just move my first for something else at that point personally yeah, if, i mean can As you fair value as it is you know you're looking at running backs that first depending on where it is can you try to get saquon barkley for that first if you have to add a little bit more yeah. i would i'd I would rather do that. that you're not going to get cmc for a single first unfortunately because no. unless it's an early that. one yeah but I'm pretty sure he's not human at this point. Moving on to another one. This one is going to tug at your heartstrings a little bit. 12 team, super flex, start 10, PPR, 0.5, 10 and premium. Jaden Reed, one of your favorite wideouts in the NFL currently. For Trey Benton, one of your favorite, if not your favorite, rookie running back. What side are you picking here, Mike? I'm on the Jaden Reed side. Um, and I do like Trey Benson. I've been a Trey Benson believer since I first turned on the film. Probably more, definitely more so than Nate. I don't know if you and I are can't remember if we're both. I've been in the middle. I'm okay. in the middle. But Jaden Reed, the guy who I think is going to be the wide receiver one on what looks to be a very, very good Packers offense. Give me that. The longevity is there. And hey, James Conner, if he stays healthy, he is damn good enough to keep Dre Benson off the field. Um, but it's yeah. going to be hard to keep Jaden Reed off the field regardless of who else is there. I don't disagree with that one bit. I, you know, I, I tend to leave the Jaden Reed side straight up as well. If you are making this deal, I think the Trey Benson side should have a little bit more added to it. Um, something to the tune of a third round pick, maybe nothing too crazy. Um, maybe you're getting a pick improvement in a rookie draft or something like that. But I don't think it's anything too much. I don't think it's anything, you know, you're not going to get first on top of Benson for Jaden Reed or anything like that. But I think pretty fair, but I think that Benson side needs a little bit more added to it. With that said, moving right along here, cruising through these last few 12 team, one quarterback start nine. 0.5 PPR, no tight end premium. Jordan Addison for Trey McBride. This one's easy for me, Mike. Even without a tight end premium, I'm going Trey McBride here, no doubt. Another guy who's on a collision course for a, an absolute, even more of a breakout year than he had last year. Set to be the second receiving option in that offense. Something we love to see out of tight ends, volume and efficiency. And last year, Trey McBride was efficient over volume. Uh, leader in the league in most efficiency categories. Jordan Addison is probably going to end up being like a fringe wide receiver two, three. I think at the end of the day, as much as we like Addison, I think he can be a good flex play for you. I just think that's where he's going to end up finishing. I think he's probably when everybody's healthy and everything's said and done, probably the third receiving option in this offense. And Aaron Jones is going to be more of a receiving factor than most backs have been for Minnesota recently. Um, probably since Dalvin Cook left. Even more to consider with Jordan Addison. I would not like, I think he has a good start to the season while Hawk is maybe on the mend coming back. We have yet to see how long that's going to be. Trey McBride here for me, easy. I think for me to even consider this deal, I mean, I'm probably asking for a first on top of Addison. Maybe I send back a second. I don't think I'm really in the realm to make this deal because I just don't think I'm that interested in Addison to begin with. Probably looking for a different wideout from another team from that team trying to get Trey McBride. Mike, your thoughts? I agree with everything you said. I really don't have much to add. It's the 
the um the McBride side and it's easy. And I like Jordan yeah. Addison, but give me Trey McBride. What would you need added to the Jordan Addison side to make the deal? Yeah, I'm probably gonna ask for if it's a projected late first, sure. you know, or a late first if the 24 draft has not happened yet. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm gonna be looking at because we're talking perennial potential top five tight end. And like I said, I like Jordan Addison, but what's his ceiling? Yeah, low and wide receiver yeah. two with Justin Jefferson and TJ Hawkinson there. Two more here. Twelve teams, super flex, start ten, PPR point five ten at premium. You rather have Sam Laporta? Or Brock Bowers plus a 25 first. This is a pretty Tough. pretty hefty price to pay if you want to go get Sam Laporta, but man, this is I'm what like, Sam Laporta I'm, costs. Yeah, it's nuts. I mean, what are you thinking? I think I want Sam Laporta. Yeah. Uh, that's he's just you know, I was really high on Sam Laporta last year. I hate to say I told mm-hmm. you so, so I won't. But look, we still don't know. They got Michael Mayer there, they got Devontae Adams, they have Michael Gallup in Las Vegas as well. Um, and Jacoby Myers, as Nate will remind you, whether you want him to or not. So there is going to be some target competition there for Brock Bowers, and rookie tight ends typically don't blossom right away like Sam Laporta did. Um, I would prefer if it was Brock Bowers in a second for Sam Laporta, to be honest with you, but Sam Laporta is the player that I want. I, I think I agree as well, and I think it is a matter of we need to have the discussion. Sometimes we prefer one side, but that doesn't mean that side is fair value, and I think we need to get to that point where, you know, is it where we switch it to Brock Bowers being plus 25 second. Are we getting a third back with Sam Laporta? Something along those lines. I know it's tough to ask for a pick back with Sam Laporta, but you know, with, with how highly regarded Brock Bowers is, you know, I think it's, it is a lot to pay for 25 first along with Brock Bowers to go get Sam Laporta. And I think, I think it's worth, uh, worth uh, asking at that price. So with that said, we got Sam Laporta in the books and our last one, uh, 12 team super flex start 10 PPR full tight end premium. Derek Carr plus the 24 111 for Brock Purdy plus a 25 second. I know where I'm at on this deal, Mike. It's pretty easy for me. Where are you at on this one? Yeah, give me Brock Purdy in the 25 second. Brock yeah. Purdy is younger. Derek Carr is, you know, he's a top 20 quarterback, but you're probably going to fall between 15 and 20 with Derek Carr. Yeah. Um, kind of wish that he wasn't there so Chris Olave could potentially be elevated a little bit more. I mean, uh, but he's still it's, over a thousand yards both years in the NFL. So yeah, can't really and about that. it's it's arguable if he would be in a better shape because who knows what the quarterback would be behind Derek Carr. If Derek Carr is nothing else, he is very mid and not bad <laughs> mid, not good mid, but he is right at the middle of the row of being well, the middest quarterback ever to exist. You know what? There's 32 starting quarterbacks in the NFL. He was quarterback 16 last year, Bob. So, yes, the true definition of mid. Um, but I still want I want the younger quarterback. He's not going anywhere. And a 25 second on top of that. Yes, you're moving an aging quarterback in a late first, but I still want pretty in second. I, I think the caveat for me here would be which quarterback am I replacing? Am I trying to upgrade what is my quarterback two in Derek Carr, maybe my third quarterback or what might be my third quarterback is somebody like Geno Smith or Baker Mayfield, somebody of that ilk. And I'm upgrading my quarterback two, am I, or am I upgrading my quarterback three like we were in that previous scenario or maybe downgrading like where we had Mahomes and uh, Kyler as our quarterback one and two. And this is kind of our third quarterback. I don't hate the idea of diversifying into Derek Carr in a late first to then turn that late first into a wide out running back maybe brock bar sliding not in a tight end premium he wouldn't be but you know something along those lines i don't hate that concept in a nutshell though not knowing exactly how these quarterbacks pan out yeah i'll take brock purdy and the 25 second thank you all for watching thank you all for supporting the brand if you want to support us further as easy as liking the video leaving a comment on videos you watch tell us what you liked disliked if you disagree that is a-okay we want to talk about it. We want to hear it. Let's have a discussion about it like good, honest adults and friendly Americans or Canadians. We have some Canadians out there. We have some Germans out there. We have people all over the world that watch, which is pretty darn cool. Everything you do to help us grow makes us that much better. We pretty much put everything back in the brand that we make, trying to upgrade cameras, trying to upgrade this, that, and the other thing, whatever tech we use. It all gets poured right back into helping you guys enjoy your leagues and win your leagues that much more. So appreciate the heck out of you guys if you want to support us anyway it's all in the youtube description anytime you watch a video and say hey these guys are doing awesome anything you could possibly do to help us out 
is right down there in the YouTube description from Patreon, from getting a roster view to checking out our trusted partners, whatever the case is, it's all in there. But with that said, we're going to get the heck on out of here. We'll see you in the next one. Until then, I hope that y'all have a good one.